Now I'm addressing the first way because this has got to do with how we go about identifying related party transactions and therefore this is going to be used in answering questions 1 and question 3. At least the initial part of question 3 where you need to identify all the related party transactions that you are going to audit. So, your required says, Describe procedures to identify related party transactions or relationships. So the required says, Audit all related party transactions with this run related party. And you're going to have to go and try and find if they have recorded all of those transactions or if they haven't disclosed certain transactions. So I have to go and identify all possible related party transactions and relationships. Okay, the standard literally gives us lists of ways to go about trying to find them. So this would form part of the procedures I would do as risk assessment procedures. In the planning stage, so that I know what related party transactions they had during the year and all their different related party relationships. So I've said, yeah, I can, as part of a risk assessment procedure, inquire with management would be my first point of call. Those charged with governance, personnel who deal with transactions that are significant and outside of the normal course of business. Because we've already said these are indicators of potential related party transactions. In-house legal, chief ethics officers, who else could I ask that's crucial within a company and understanding the business and the risks within the business? internal audit. So guys, I would say about three marks here would be available if they asked you how can you identify three marks for discussing who you could potentially go inquire with. Then we know that as part of risk assessment procedures we can inspect certain things to help us. So, some examples the standard gives us is looking at external confirmations like confirmations from banks or attorneys or actually going and getting those to give me some evidence about who related parties are. And guys, think about it from a bank perspective. If they are part of a group or they are the holding company and therefore they have subsidiaries, when you go and ask for a bank confirmation, you will give the company's name and ask for all accounts linked to that. And so if their subsidiaries are linked to their accounts, then you would pick them up there and that's how you would be able to see that there are other relations. Okay, attorneys would be aware because they might have had to draw up the contracts during the purchase agreement to form part of the groups. Income tax returns, again, if you've got lots of subsidiaries, you might actually be filing together. And then I've got some blanks here because I want you to think a little bit. What else do you think I could look at to help me to see if there are multiple companies within the group? Where would we see that? That's a nice easy one. If we looked at the share registers. Share register would say who has shares in this business and they would then be related parties. Thinking back to our definition of related parties, it wasn't only just people who were related because of control, joint control. There were also key management. So where would I look for information here with regards to key management? At contracts. Employment contracts. Could give me an idea of who is key management. Other things, contracts that are outside the normal course of business could be an indicator of related parties. Invoices from professional advisors, maybe life insurance policies because those would be taken out over key management. 
internal audit report because we've already said we could inquire with internal audit now we could go and get some physical evidence from them just like we did with legal counsel getting external confirmations for them what else could we do in terms of a risk assessment procedure where else would i be able to see who their related party transactions were with or are with and their relationships the prior financials because the prior financials should have had who they were related to previously and the transactions they entered into so it's going to give me a good starting point this year to see they still have those people disclosed and similar transactions disclosed and then think about it what are we looking at transactions what do I know about any transaction that they enter into during the year they must be authorized it must be valid where would a transaction with the related party potentially be authorized or discussed in the minutes of meetings so I can go and inspect minutes of meetings for any authorization of related party relationships or related party transactions okay and that is all sitting in these specific paragraphs we'll look at when we get to the standard so those are the procedures we perform for identifying related party transactions question one and part one of question three identifying related party transactions to ensure that I audit everything now let's look at what we need to do to audit and ultimately therefore find the answers to question two and part two of question three.